You want to fill some down? I'm on site at the next target with the uh, helo and thing. Filling darts with a sedative to immobilize wolves. So if we still want to apply for Elkhorn to make sure they're in Arizona. <laughs> going over capture priorities. And reviewing procedures to safely enter and exit a hovering helicopter. January 30th was the first day of Mexican Wolf helicopter operations in Arizona for 2025. And this sedated wolf was the first one captured. This is the scene each winter, usually in late January and early February, when helicopters fly above Mexican wolf recovery areas in Arizona and New Mexico to count and capture endangered Mexican wolves. My name is uh, Jason Caps. I'm the interagency field team lead for the Mexican Wolf Project here in the White Mountains. And I've been doing it for about four weeks now, I think it is. So fairly new and, and I get to jump into the deep end and learn a lot. Mexican wolves were on the verge of extinction in the 1970s after decades of government programs and private efforts to exterminate them. In 1976, they were federally protected under the Endangered Species Act. Then the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service started a captive breeding program with seven of the last remaining wolves. And in 1998, the first wolves from captivity were released in Arizona. At the end of 2024, at least 286 Mexican wolves were documented in the wild across Arizona and New Mexico. That's 11% more than the minimum of 257 wolves counted in 2023. And it's a record, nine straight years of population growth. An amazing thing, it's awesome to see that it's continuing to progress and you know, all of that goes towards recovery, the whole purpose of this program. One of the goals of the Mexican Wolf Recovery Plan is a wild population of at least 320 wolves in the United States. But another, you know, recovery criteria of ours uh, relates to genetic management. Genetic diversity is a challenge since every Mexican wolf in the wild is a descendant of those seven original wolves in the captive breeding program. That's why fostering genetically valuable pups from captivity into wild wolf dens is so important. By carefully selecting pairs of wolves to breed in captivity, biologists are producing pups that will maximize genetic diversity in the wild. In 2024, 27 pups were fostered, and since 2016, a total of 126 genetically valuable pups have been strategically placed into 48 wild dens across Arizona and New Mexico. At least 79 of them were known to be alive at the end of December of the year they were born. Pretty good considering the one-year survival rate of wild-born pups is about 50%. Our uh, goal is to document 22 fosters, uh, pups from captivity released into the wild at a young age, surviving the breeding age, which is two years old. Um, out of those 22, we've already documented 20. So we're doing really well. 13 of those 20 fosters are known to have produced at least 31 litters in the wild. But those successes are just the start. Work to improve genetic diversity will continue even after initial goals are met. But if you can step off right where you are, just step off and walk forward. The Arizona Game and Fish Department's wolf team has been busy counting wolves long before the helicopter takes flight. Coming into our annual population counts, um, our team does a lot of effort on the ground trying to get a complete and accurate count of every wolf on the landscape using a variety of methods, trail cameras, track counts, visuals, so actually going out and locating these wolves visually and getting a complete pack count. We then transition into helicopter operations, so we are still obtaining counts from the air but the primary goal being to capture these wolves to deploy more collars. So this is one of the GPS VHF radio collars that are actually put onto the wolves during our capture operations, whether that be 
ground trapping or helicopter trapping. About 50% of the population has collars. We identify priorities both in Arizona and New Mexico based on maintaining a minimum of two collars for every wolf pack. That allows us to manage them very effectively and if we lose one of the collars for any reason, we're not losing track of that entire pack. We do put collars on the sub-adults and pups because those animals aren't gonna stay with that pack forever. They're eventually gonna disperse. They may form new packs. They might join up with another pack. Having those collars provides so much helpful data for us, nice. for fostering efforts, conflict mitigation. They're incredibly important tools to have. After an uneventful morning, the afternoon was anything but slow. It went fast. Uh, they caught four wolves in about four and a half hours. The first wolf we caught was a yearling male out of the Poncho Spring pack. Um, that fulfilled our two collar minimum for that pack. So that's awesome. Um, that male also within the next year or two is likely gonna disperse. And when he finds a mate of his own, starts a new pack, that's an automatic collar on an alpha male. Okay, so now you're gonna have to go up a little higher. Under the supervision of Game and Fish veterinarian and Justice Allen, a processing team does a health check draws blood, administers vaccines, and collars the wolf. We mark them up with different tape. So red is for alpha females, blue on the shoulders for alpha males, and then the rest of the collar is gonna have a unique variety of tape. The unique patterns help biologists identify a wolf when they see it in the wild. Our second pack that we went for was Prime Canyon we caught the alpha female of that pack. She had slipped her collar a few years ago, so she wasn't wearing one. Having a collar on an alpha female uh, is a very high priority because it allows us to identify their denning location in the spring. The next wolf we got was also an alpha female out of the Sierra Blanca pack. She was collared, but it was getting a bit old, so it was time for a replacement. And our last wolf of the day came out of the hoodoo pack. That was an alpha male. His collar was completely failed. It had been for a few years. He was collared back as a, as a pup. Wildlife managers are taking the first wolf that was captured back into its territory. Wolves are released close to where they were captured so they can easily find their packs. Managing Mexican wolves in the wild isn't easy, but the success is rewarding. And it's great to see that these numbers continue to go up. That success has really come huge in the, in the past probably five to eight years. It says a lot about the efforts of the Arizona and New Mexico Game and Fish Departments, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and all of the partners in wolf recovery. Everybody knows their job and they do it well. It takes a lot of hard work and it's nice to see all that hard work paying off. 2024 was more than just the ninth consecutive year of population growth. It was another step closer to recovery for this endangered subspecies of gray wolf, the Mexican wolf.